and we are back um so you were asking me about kind of biggest fuck up and the biggest one i learned about so yeah biggest fuck up <clears throat> so I, I had at the time i had been a a, a site super uh, which meant I was 100% off of the tools, 100% accountable for everything, watching everybody fuck everything up. Yeah. And it was just, it was torture. Must have been irritating. <laughs> it was brutal. It was yeah. brutal. Cause you're just like, I could, I should just be fucking doing this myself. And about yeah. the third time I had that conversation with the guy I was reporting to, like the, the other problem there was the guy I was reporting to has never built a deck in his life. He just had money. Yeah, so okay. to have those conversations, it, it just didn't work. So I, I left. I wasn't yeah. happy. So then a headhunter came and got me and said, found a guy, real good money. And it was like probably 15 or 20 grand more than what I was making. Like it was, it was, it was big jump, big, big jump. Nice. Uh, so I went in and interviewed with the guy, uh, Italian guy, nice big office. Um, about halfway through the the interview, he's like, uh, have a glass of wine with me and, and stick around. Like the interview is over let's get to know each other. I got real yeah. good vibes off him and I was exactly what he wanted. And he was offering exactly what, what, what I wanted. Like everything was perfect. Cause yeah. I, he said that I could run the sites and then I could frame them, board them, tape them, do the T bars, whatever I wanted to do. And it would be incorporated into a bonus at the end. Oh, beautiful. so what that meant for me was I get, I get to be in charge and then I get to have folk, uh, control over the quality and then i get to do yeah. it you're right yeah i feel like i feel like quality is a big thing for you on the a lot of videos that i watch like yeah. that's something that you pay a lot of attention to especially the ones where you show i think there was one where uh the drywalling on the arch that they were putting in like you could tell there's a big crack in there and like yeah. just from the way you were talking about i'm like this guy was frustrated <laughs> oh yeah well, <laughs> well you have to get it done right you have to and and that's what you know Anybody can put in a hundred hours in a week, right? Anybody can go finish a job. You know what I mean? It's how good can you do something? Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I feel like that's what I bring to the table. It's not quite because it's never speed. I can do things really fast. I can, I can frame and, and board super fast. Yeah. Um, but I, I would much rather have something a hundred percent perfect on a bunch of laser lines than do it an hour quicker. Uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like uh, production's yeah. never been my game. No, that totally makes it, sense. Well, it, it was once upon a time, uh, but I, that perfect is, it's just a fucking, there's something about it, you know? Um, so this yeah. guy tells me that I'm going to satisfied. You're happy. With it's so satisfying. And and you kind of look back, especially when <laughs> someone has a comment, like that's insane. Right. Why would you be that worried about it? And you're like, cause you're not right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's <laughs> why. Um, so I, uh, I get the first set of plans from this guy and it says Sudbury and, and we're supposed to be working in Toronto. Uh, so I'm like, okay, this is a test. No problem. And I go out to Sudbury and I'm waiting for a call from a non-existent project manager. This guy's hunting or some fucking thing. He never came to site, never. Oh. And the uh, the owner of the company came to site once. Uh, he came the day after I got up there to come and hold my hand and get me my prints and whatever. I marched my ass down to uh, um, town so hall and got the prints and and like i know what i'm doing so he yeah. came up saw the layout was all done and he's like i don't know what i'm here for I, said, I don't know i don't know what you're here for either <laughs> so uh he, we went to, over to kelsey's and, and we got blasted uh just because he had the whole day planned out to you know, come and babysit right, so yeah we had this great dinner uh, got super drunk talked about the future uh and then i realized that there were no trades coming we didn't have any so I had to find them all wow. uh, in, in a city like, can you start tomorrow? So that was stressful. Um, and then there was nobody because the project manager was non-existent. There was nobody back and forthing with the customer. So, so, your, so your role in this was a, a site supervisor and the role of like the project manager would be kind of like the person who's kind of coordinating between you and, and the company and saying, hey, this is what's going on. This is where the project's at. This is the timeline, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so usually uh, a project manager position, uh, they're taking a look at budgets, they're taking a look at timelines, they're doing all the back and forth with the customer, like the client, 
gotcha. then after all of those things are happening, they're funneling to you what your responsibilities are. And what's changed gotcha. is basically the job. What changed between this week and last week? Um, and then, you know, you have like a weekly or a biweekly, like every, two times a week, something conversation, we keep, typically. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he just wasn't there. Gotcha. So eventually at the end of this thing, and I had a blast, like uh, I was going in from like seven to noon, seven to two, six to two, doing the site super thing. I would go back yeah. to my hotel room, sleep for a couple of hours and then come back and work. Oh. Uh, so, but that's when the Instagram started. So people were like watching me during the day being a site super and then coming back to me being a fucking degenerate ch like chugging <laughs> monster energy drinks and framing by myself in a tank top <laughs> and so I, ha I had a blast doing it mm -hmm. and uh at the end of it all he he came back up and i was anticipating a fat bonus check and he fired me what well because he didn't need me anymore right so why, you, go, why wouldn't go. he not why wouldn't he need you well, you... because he can't afford me. Uh... So, so you you go tell some kid, I'll pay you twenty grand more than what you're making now. It's gonna be the best thing that's ever happened to you. Go go to some shithole city in the middle of COVID, eat takeout for a month and a half, do all of the project management, site supervision, framing, boarding, taping, ceilings, tile, flooring, and then ha have a nice day at the end. Because you're within three months. So contractually, and then actually contractually, he didn't have to pay the fucking headhunter either. That's because ridiculous. because I didn't make it to three months. That's ridiculous. It was amazing. I, I had never I had never been blown out of the water like that before. Or I was like, holy shit, this is what <laughs> this is what you do. Um and I, I honestly hats off to him because I, I've got a pretty good bullshit detector. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, get on this guy. <laughs> that was the site that I learned the most on ever. Wow. Uh, because I learned that I could manage projects. I learned that I could communicate with customers to the level of a project manager, that yep. I could work double shifts for five weeks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I Very could good. start a project and bring it to the end. Uh, and, and I learned that no matter what anybody's saying to you, you can absolutely get fucked over. Uh, so you, that... That have was you ever gone back one. to take a look look at the at the project to see if it was done just out of curiosity or um I got back in touch with um yeah I shouldn't say who it is the uh the the customer that I was mm -hmm. that I was back and forthing with because this guy ended up not paying the plumber and not pay, paying the the my board guys on a different site in Toronto like he he ended up burning a bunch of bridges yeah. uh so I got back in touch with um the the client just to ask you know what's going on because the headhunter eventually called and he said you know we're trying to get paid from this guy what happened and i yeah. kind of told him what happened and he goes okay because we got an email saying you did a bunch of damage to the site and like like he, so this guy tried to say that the headhunter owed him money oh my god it, it was crazy the stuff that i saw this guy get away with but he was so good at it um, so I, I sent him all the pictures that I have. Like I keep a daily journal. I take a video daily journal. I take picture daily journal just because yep. you got to, you got to save your ass, right? You got to keep the receipts. Um, you got to keep the receipts. I like that. Um, but yeah, I ended up seeing it finished. It was beautiful. And then they were all super happy about it. Um, that was another thing I had a conversation with my dad where he was like, so what are you going to do now? And I'm like, Oh, I might go fucking start building booster juices. Cause uh, <laughs> you know, I just, just try and fuck this guy over. But I, you know, obviously it wasn't the right decision because I've, I've done quite well since then. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the, the, the site that I fucked up the biggest was as soon as I got into taping uh, in two Decembers ago, uh, I was back and forth with Columbia a lot. And they were like, if you ever start really taping all the time we'll start you know sending you stuff every month and that's kind of when all that are, started are you you're sponsored by columbia then um so they used to do what was called uh, an ambassador program where okay. you know essentially there was a contract of you'll give us x amount of content for you know x amount of tools and that kind of stuff they've stopped doing that and okay. then they do uh per month there's a different tool and they'll send it to different people. Cause if you know, when you have an ambassador program like that, you're basically putting all your eggs in three baskets a year gotcha. Gotcha. as a, as opposed to this year, you know, there's, there's been dozens of people that have gotten the opportunity. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so this has all kind of just been a handshake with them. There's never been anything over, overly signed. I've never been tied down. They've made it real clear that I can work with other people if I wanted to. That's good. Um, but I, I, I never, I, I don't want to say I never will, but I mean, I'm super loyal, right? Um, yeah. So anyways, now I'm a taper because Columbia Tools has got my back. And I, mm-hmm. I take this fucking uh, site and it was the first one that the guy said yes. And I was just happier than shit that I got it. I think it paid yeah. four grand. Might have been 4500 bucks. Anyways, and it was just a house to tape. Like I figured we'd be in and out of there in two weeks and that'd be the most money that I made in that time that year. And I went in and the board work wasn't done. Some of the framing wasn't done. Uh, it was just a, a shit bag disaster. Um, and I took it on. They, yeah. He was like, well, what do you want me to come back and fix it? I should have said, yeah. 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 You, you need to give it to me in such a way that I can tape it. Uh, but I didn't. And after, at the two week mark, um, they showed up with like 10 guys and now everyone's going to help me finish and just started ruining shit. So I walked, I was like, no, thank you. And so I think I got burned for like 2,500 bucks on that site. And it was my fault, right? I had no control over what was going on. Like I, I, I should have not accepted the site and then I should have um brought more people in if i was going to do all the extra work uh yeah. there were a lot of things that i should have done and i didn't and yeah that was probably the biggest fuck up that the company's had so far just cuz it was good. yeah if if and we we were on that every day on uh the stories just like i am now like we, i was pretty transparent about the whole thing but it, it that one yeah. hurt that one hurt pretty yeah, bad yeah. I bet I would say if like my if I was to give an example it's probably I think that's like the only job I could really pull from is this the latest one that I did yeah I think for me it was just inexperience with that wallpaper yeah. just having to rip that down and not knowing exactly what was behind it and then also to not I feel like I should have asked questions way way in advance before I even started in that process so I think for me it was just like the inexperience of like not knowing how to deal with that situation um but I think I made a pretty good recovery in terms of like actually fixing it. And then as you were saying, like with the last house that you went to go and do the um, the boarding for like not, ha- not having anything ready for you, like mm-hmm. well, same situation with me, with the guy who was doing the flooring. I initially told the client, I said, the best thing to do is to get the walls finished and then have your flooring guy come in. Right. You want to go yeah. top to bottom. Like I told them and she was like, no, the flooring guy, first of all, it was a guy that they found off of Facebook and Ooh. this guy, this guy had a whole bunch of pictures and apparently it was pictures from his own house that he had, <laughs> that he had done. He put on his Facebook page. <laughs> saying, this is my business. Yada, yada, Jesus. yada. And I always find, I always get this thing too, where like, if I'm working in a house, if there's other trades in the, in the house that are working in a different room or something like that, I, I mean, I always appreciate advice. I'm always someone that like likes yep. to take advice, but I think a lot of some of the older guys that like feel like you know they've been around the block are always too eager to give me advice, and yep. that was like, kind of like the same atmosphere that I was getting from this guy of like, like this is how you're gonna do the skim coating. You want me to show you? And I think for me, I just wanted him to show me because I wanted someone to kind of get it started, yep. just so I can have the confidence to like, okay, I I know where I can take over. I know what the process is. But even yeah. when he was showing me, I was like. This doesn't seem right. This is this is just yeah. awesome. I just I, I, I have don't to think get so. started, right? Yeah. 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 I was like, but I have to get started, right? So I think for him, him just starting, I was like, okay, at least now I have a confidence. Like, I know I can just put it on the walls and everything is gonna be okay. I'm not gonna like be destroying anything, right? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like for me, what I learned from that is just like you gotta find the right people to get advice from, right? Like totally. you can't just like take anyone at their word and just I think I should have just looked at his handiwork, like you yeah. could tell he was rushing everything. He really wanted to get out of the house. Um, she made a mistake, the client. So she's a friend of mine and she'd made the mistake of paying him. So she paid him a deposit and then he like called her back and said, Hey, like I need the rest of the amount that you owe me, which yeah. is so, it was so off. It's like, no, we agreed for the deposit and yeah. then the rest of the amount for when the job's done. Right. But I think when he'd asked, like the mom had been there, I was also in the house as well too. So he used the kind of the, the chaos of things kind of turning around mm-hmm. as a way to like, 
bamboo store and gets some more money out of it but things like that just like really irk my soul like if you if you say you know what you're doing you need to be professional you need to conduct yourself as such and if you're going to give someone else advice and it's a trade or someone else who's like seeking help from you if you don't know what you're doing just say i don't know yeah that's like the biggest thing for me like you need to tell people when you don't know certain things right but yeah i think i definitely learned like you need to ask the right people you need to ask people where you've seen their work you've seen what they're doing is right and seeing your videos i could always tell them like this guy knows what he's doing like yeah work very seriously so yeah definitely the biggest job I've, I've learned but i also learned to kind of get better with like my estimates because yeah. i lost a lot of money on that on that job and uh my friend who um his dad's also a contractor was saying that usually the bigger jobs are the ones that lose your money do you find that that's that's the truth there or um like bigger scope wise is that what you mean like yes. uh, yeah okay so Yes and no. Um, if it's like a framing and boarding, uh, it can be as big as it wants. As long as my timeline that I hand in works, I know yeah. that I can do it. Uh, but when you're taking on entire projects, for instance, this kitchen that we did, this last one, yeah, uh, this was the designer of my clothing. Uh, her friend, who had a very minimal budget, and uh, I had a designer friend of mine that we were going to start designing kitchens. And it was one of these like, okay, you don't have enough money for that. And I've got somebody that I'd like to try out to see what goes on here. Yeah, Sounds like a good fit. The, mm -hmm. the common denominator is me. So at the end mm -hmm. of the day, if you run out of money or if this gets fucked up, I'm still here and accountable of everything. Um, and then they, everything all went to shit. Everything went to shit. Um, we opened up the walls and and there was like a big fucking plumbing stack outside of the wall but the kitchen designer had designed this beautiful flat against the wall kitchen that's been ordered and is a 30 percent of our budget so there's no changing it so i'm like okay i guess we're furring out the wall at my expense and oh, that's also God. more <laughs> insulation at my expense. And now we've got a window return at my expense. And you know what I mean? And it, and it all starts yeah. fucking snowballing. I think I quoted 30 hours. Yeah. I quoted 30 hours of labor, but that included bringing people in for demo. Uh, and I stopped counting at 100. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's painful. Because I was like, I'm not doing this every day. We're just going to pretend that it's a hundred forever. Yeah. Oh my god! So yeah, do you so go do you, in a situation like that? Do you go back to the client and say, okay, it's taking me longer than it's supposed to be, and then add more amount onto that based on whatever it is that you run into? So this was kind of a perfect storm of things. Uh, I hadn't had a vacation in five years, and I was going to demo the kitchen, get it to the point where everything is ready for um, the cabinets to be installed. Yeah. And then I had the trades coming in afterwards to to button everything up. It, it was set up pretty well. Um, and then I guess one of the cabinet guys, families got sick and it, it pushed them two days. Mm -hmm. But because of that, it pushed my plumber a week and a half and it pushed this and it pushed that. Uh, and that's kind of what started a, a secondary snowball. But Sorry. So where I was getting at with this is when I open up a wall and now there's an enormous issue, that's yeah. the time you talk to the customer about more money it is okay. I quoted you for this. Yeah. This is now a huge issue that mm -hmm. is stopping progress. And right. that's the only way to not lose is what we've agreed on. I'm happy to do because yeah. that's what we've agreed on. When something extra has come, then that yeah. needs to be treated as an extra. And if it's not, that's fine. I'll draw you some prints and you can do it on your own. Gotcha. And I'll come back once it's where it needs to be again. That's okay. the only way to do that. I'm way too kind for that. And I was leaving, I think, seven days after we exposed everything. So there, there wasn't even time to have that conversation and they had no money. Like it, yeah. it, this was like a, we, I don't think they remortgaged their house, but I, they probably had been saving every penny they had for God knows how long to get 30 grand together. 
So yeah. to, it, there was just this real shitty feeling in my stomach of going to ask them for more money. Yeah. Um, so I was like, no problem. We'll kind of start doing this and doing that. And it really, until you get to zero, you don't, nothing hurts that bad. Uh, right. You know, as, as long as your bills are being paid and that kind of stuff, like you, sometimes it's a no profit is still a good karma win, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, we just, we didn't have time to be talking about that kind of stuff. So I just went ahead and did a bunch of the extras. Uh, but typically that's when you would start having conversations of, this is what extra time looks like. This is what extra material looks like. Now you have all the information. You make the decision. Gotcha. Um, but I mean, if you take a big site from a builder or or something like that, um, if you're not doing exactly everything you're saying you're going to do, you're going to get hammered at the end of it. Uh, yeah. Because if you can't facilitate what you've said you're going to do, that gives them the okay to bring other people in to do it and then just charge you accordingly. And if you get into that situation, you're fucked. Like, uh, you, you might lose out more than what you've put in. Yeah. Like that might, it might, it might end up being a zero, like I, in commercial work. Anyways, I've never had that happen to me, but I see it all the time. Cause I, yeah. I, I, I run major sites during the day. Right. Yeah. Um, so Crazy. where are you seeing things going now? Man, I feel like I've been, I wouldn't say flip-flopping with the business, but I think I haven't finally like gotten to that point where I'm like, okay, this is the time to really scale it up. And I feel like I'm in a situation where I'm like, I'm very young and I have a lot of things that keep changing. Um, so like, How old are you? 25. Oh, you are fucking young. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, being of the year, I had started uh, this program at, at uh, George Brown. So I was kind of like, okay, I'll do like jobs on the weekend. I'll kind of keep with my momentum of like, right now my clientele is mostly like, my dad has a buddy that needs his basement painted. Totally. Like There's mom. always work like that. Yeah. 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 And for me, like, I feel like that's perfect because I'm in like in a stage where I, I can really like master my craft. I can learn new things as I'm going. And like with the clients I'm getting, I'm, I'm free to kind of make these like mistakes where I, I can learn and like ask around, like, how do I fix this? And then mm -hmm. fix it. I'm like, okay, now I know, now I know how to do this, right? Now I do skim coding, that sort of thing. Right. Um, right now, my, my biggest plan or the thing that I'm like focused on, um, I would say I'm still going to keep on with the momentum of like taking clients as I have time, as I have free time. I have a friend of mine that, uh, they want popcorn, uh, their popcorn ceiling removed. So like, that's something that's really easy. I can do over the weekends here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, cheap for them. It's good experience for me. It gives me good content as well. Uh, but now my biggest thing is like, I'm back home with my parents. So my biggest thing is just help them like do a few like little renovations here and there. And then also to like, that's same perfect. Thing, like learning as I go along, um, mm -hmm. I want to change out the backsplash that we have there. I want to um, sand down the cabinets that we have and then paint that over. So I would say I'm still in the very early stages, but um, I'm going to school now for firefighting. Um, well so done. You'll let you'll enjoy that. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I had uh, my bunker fitting just this past uh, weekend, and I felt like a little kid. I was like, "Oh, this is I so <laughs> this is so exciting!" So I'm looking forward to that. And like with firefighting, it's perfect because I want to continue on like building yeah. a business. Um, and I, the schedule for firefighting really, really, really helps. It's like seven yeah. days a month. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it really helps yeah. me do that. So I'm not putting the business away just yet. I think I'm still mm -hmm. in like early stages looking for work here and there. And I mean, if I ever find or if I ever uh, come across anyone that's like doing any sort of renovations or anything like that, I always mm -hmm. offer my help so I can learn from experienced guys in the business. Um, Throw your hat in the ring anyways. And then if they need you, they need you. If they don't, they don't. And then the, the nice part about that is when you're helping people, Mm -hmm. um they should be able to do it on their own so if you have a free day you're all you are there is is an assist right which is huge because yeah. you get you get to learn and they get an assist it's a win all around yeah 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 and i'm i, I feel like uh my parents were much older when when they had us so i'm, I'm always like i have this like old soul where i'm like mm -hmm. I, know, I know exactly where i need to be at all times so i feel like that really really works well with a lot of these blue collar guys where i'm like i know i need to stand here i need to you know assist with this ask questions yeah. make sure i'm not doing anything to fuck up their work right because you know this is their livelihood as well too so yeah that's kind of where the position i'm in still building still kind of learning um, and then hopefully finish this uh, firefighting program and then really take off because I'll have the tools that I need to, you know, really push this business to where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did. So you mentioned that your quoting is, is 
a weak point. Is that what you're saying? Huge, huge. Weak yeah. Point. Okay. So if I could give you any advice on that, okay, um, I would say get a Kijiji post going, get a Facebook post going, and yeah. ex- accept everything that comes your way, and go and quote it, and quote it high, and it'll give you an idea of what people say yes and no to. Okay. When when they say yes, unfortunately, the answer is we're we're booked. You know, even if you're not. Okay. And and what you what you're going to end up doing there is you're going to become more comfortable quoting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to get way more comfortable asking for what you deserve. Um, and because the first time that I started quoting properly and people were still super happy with it, I I was like, okay. Like I, how much money did I waste last year? Yeah, oh my God. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, because money's just money, right? You don't know people's situation, and and when I talk to other guys that are doing this kind of work, it's you know for somebody to ask for you know twenty grand for a bathroom isn't unheard of. And I think I redid my parents for thirteen hundred bucks one time. Yeah, you know what I mean, and it, it yeah. looked pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> so. It's uh, it's a little bit wild, but uh, yeah, there's nothing stopping you from quoting everything on the planet, it, but there is something stopping you from taking on something you're not capable of. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, yeah. that's a big no, no for me if, if you were to be asking, but uh, yeah, if, if quoting's a, a weak point, that's an easy one to get over. That's a real yeah. easy one to get over. I think for me, it's, it's also to like the background that I come from, like me and my dad were just talking, I was helping him fix, uh, we got like a a cover for the back uh window there because he just put in a, a larger window for the basement because we have tenants down there nice uh, and he uh he, we were talking about pricing he had a guy who came and put it in like i don't know what you'd call it but it's almost like a, a see-through cover for, like that back window area you can buy it at rona or whatever and he bought um it. yeah like an eaves window like a, a the basement window yes yeah yeah and there's just a cover that sits on it almost looks like a little garden uh lid yes yeah exactly <laughs> Um, and he had a guy come and fix it and the guy charged him a hundred bucks. And my dad was like, yeah, that's, that, that was my exact reaction. I was like, yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, and then my dad was like, no, that's, that's too expensive. I can't believe he charged me that much. So that's the background yeah. that I'm coming from. Right. Yeah. Like, cause I think for me, my, my dad's mindset is like, he came from Africa where it's like that's this community based sort of thing. Like even his mechanic yep. that he has fixed his car. Um, he's also Ghanaian as well too, right? It's same culture. So like what my dad does is like, if he ever sees any deals for like, uh, parts for mechanics he'll buy it for him and then the mechanic gives him a good deal and i'm like well dad that's not how it always works with you yeah. know with a bar- bartering right? system is not for everywhere though yeah exactly. that is very cultural if you will yeah exactly. yeah exactly and i'm also getting clients that are from the same culture so it's like even when i go to people's homes like i did um the same house i'm gonna go back to do popcorn for um i did their whole house top to bottom um uh the floorboards the walls nice going back to do the, the ceiling now. And I think I had originally called them for $900, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah. it was just the fear of like, you know, and it's also to when they're your elders, it's like this like respect thing. Right. So I think yeah. that's like where my hesitation comes from is like getting this big job was uh, a family friend, not a family friend, my own personal friend. So I was more comfortable like quoting her a little bit higher because I knew she would understand how much it would actually cost, even though I ended up losing totally. money on it. But, it, it finally pushed me out of that comfort zone of like, okay, I'm going to charge what I feel like I actually deserve instead of, you know. So, yeah, I think definitely if I can get my coding a little bit better, it'll give me more confidence knowing that I'm coming into this job as a professional. And I know exactly what I'm doing and I'm, I'm capable of doing a really good job, which I know I am. So, so, yeah, I think I definitely need to do that. So, you said post on Kijiji on Facebook and I'm posting like my services or I'm posting that I can give free quotes. What am I posting? Both. Yeah, free Both. quotes. This is all the stuff that I do. Um, you know, even if you go and quote something that you can't do, at least you're getting down there and getting your eyes on it. Right. It'll give you something to think about in the back of your mind of like, how the fuck would I have done that? That's right. Cool. And, and, and it's all free, right. it's all free learning. Um, the other thing that that'll do is, is later down the road, you will be the guy that showed up, never lied, uh, gave a, a reasonable quote and, uh, you know, maybe you were young. Sure. But what would have happened? Right. And, and a lot of those people call you back and they're like, hey, we got another thing and we didn't get to work with you last time. Uh, you know, it, there's a lot of positives that come from that. But you really do need to be honest with people like it's uh, 
you know, you don't walk in saying you're a 30 year guy. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting my feet under me. Yeah. Uh, I'm confident and I've got a, 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 a community that I, I come from with a lot of knowledge in it, you know? Uh, and then, cause you do, right. We're yeah. all here. How would you, um, so for me, like, I want to learn more, more of like the carpentry skills, a little bit more of like the, like the framing and things that you've mentioned. How would I get to learn more of that without, uh, I think I, I enjoy definitely being in the school system, but I, for me, I love working with someone that's experienced just kind of like watching how they do it because you learn a lot of tricks that you won't get taught when you're at school, right? Things mm-hmm. that you wouldn't necessarily think of. So how would I do that? Okay. So if I were to give you advice on that, you drive around to a subdivision that's being built and stop in just uh you guys looking for someone okay and 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 these guys will pick you up in a fucking heartbeat okay. uh, i would be i would be happy to pick up fucking garbage for whatever you're going to pay me an hour if you let me assist in the rest of it okay and and you know the uh, very quickly you're going to find people that you don't want to be around uh, th- there are guys there that are drunks. There are guys there that, you know, they do shitty work and they're fine with it. Eventually you'll stumble across somebody like me who's yeah. in there working on their own. And if they just had another set of hands that would shut the fuck up, yeah. literally, literally <laughs> yeah. me. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it, 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 guys like you are worth your weight in gold. Um, you just have to find the right person. Um, you know, there's other ways that you can do it too. You can get into the union. I think, you know, it's very I've limited. Thought, I've thought about that. Yeah, it's, I've, it's, I've thought about that. Someone said to uh, if I want to get more painting experience, like get into the union for that. And I was like, yes and no, because I feel like there's there's a lot of things there that might, like like you said, very limiting that wouldn't yeah. necessarily expose me to the things that I, I'm looking to get exposed to. So I, I feel like if you're a fast learner and you've got a real like, let's get this done work ethic, the union's not for you. Um, now, it, again, I know a lot of people from the union. I know a lot of good that the union's done uh mm-hmm. Christy slade's union and she fucking loves it uh it's a good community of people right if you want to come to work do your best not kill yourself you know what i mean it, it's yeah. a good way to learn things but if you want to put in two years worth of work a year and really get some experience and see the little tips and tricks and that kind of shit you've you got to do it on your own um, another big part of that is there's a big cushion that comes with the union where when you fail, it's not devastating. And I feel like when you fail and it's devastating, you never do that shit again. Yeah. Um, and uh, like, uh, all the time people ask me how I got so good at everything. And I just tell them I was a professional fuck up for the first like 30 years of my life. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I've just done everything so wrong so many times that eventually you're just fucking sharp as a blade, right? Because you've just been rubbing your face against the rock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Um, right yeah, passage. It, it, that, and, and I really feel like that's the way to learn. Uh, you, 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 there has to be some sort of abuse. And it, that doesn't mean from somebody, but there there has to be massive losses that, that you know, you hurt a little bit. Because yeah. you learn from that. And, and then the next time you walk into a situation, you're going to go, Ooh, this kind of looks like it's going to hurt. I'm going to spend two more seconds on it. I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to whatever. And then when, once you start doing things like that, the dominoes just line up where, you know, I I'm, I'm anticipating screwing something up. I'm, I'm doing the right things for it and I'm accountable for which, whichever way it goes. And, and I don't think the union gives you that. Um, in, in my opinion, um, also by the time I started thinking about the union, I was, I would have been making half the money, uh, just because, you know, you, it's a gradual thing. You can't just start at the top. Uh, everybody right. in the union has earned their way. Um, right. so it's, uh, I'm just a different animal. Uh, yeah. I would, I would get into framing houses a hundred percent. Give it, give it a summer. Uh, you can make real good money doing it too, man. 20, 25, 30 bucks, uh, an hour is real easy to get, uh, framing it for, uh, experience when you're going to apply for jobs like that, or they just want someone that's kind of capable. There's two ways of looking at experience guys. One is I don't have to babysit this person, but the other is they're coming with a whole bunch of shitty habits. Uh, if I've not taught you how I do things, uh, you're not doing it on your own. You're doing it for me. So now right. I've got to unteach you all this shit that you think, you know, 
to teach right. you it my way. Uh, it, no experience is sometimes a gift. Uh, yes, yeah. it's, because it's not like you're, you don't get it, right? You, you've done projects. You know how to get work done. You know what timelines are. You know what uh, quality is. Uh, I think we, I think you're frozen. Oh boy. Uh, you froze. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, I, I think we're frozen. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you just don't know how to frame yet. That's yeah. all. Uh, it's not that you don't know how to work. You're great at working, right? You just got to wrap your head around framing. Um, the nice thing that framing does is, is it, it shows you everything. Um, you know, why are we doing this for the electrical, for the HVAC, for the plumbing, for this is how structure works this is what point loads are. Yeah. Um, when you see the inside of a house get framed and you realize how fucking simple it is. Yeah. It's, it's a game changer. It's yeah. a game changer. And then once you get confident doing that, go pick up a basement, you know, yeah. uh, charge the money and, and get after it. Yeah. I've, I've always been like, I think that's why I've always been kind of drawn to this this kind of industry is just like after seeing a lot of like i mean we've had some shitty guys come through that have done some work for for a family mm -hmm. from whatever shitty stuff they've done they they have some sort of knowledge where like when i'm looking at the way they put things together it's like my brain starts firing i'm like oh that's why that's that way yeah. oh that's why that's okay a bulkhead sometimes has you know air ducts running through that's why it has to be the way it is so it's like yeah you don't just go throw screws and shit yeah 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 exactly <laughs> oh so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> first time i saw somebody uh throw a bunch of screws into something and then it all started to look wet <laughs> oh. <laughs> we we're just like oh no uh and there's no other way to do you can't just jump into shit right yeah 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 amazing yeah, i think like that's how my brain works too it's like i i like to see the way the, I, I like to see the process right From yeah it sounds like you were the type of person that took things apart and put them back together yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me, yeah, me too. Uh, so we're getting down to about three minutes here. Do you want to do another part or you want to wrap it up? Uh, we can wrap it up. I have to make yeah. sure I finish cleaning out this closet. Absolutely, here. brother. Um, so you got any shout outs or anything you want to do? Shout outs, man. Not really. I'm honestly, I, like I said, when you asked me to do the podcast, I'm like, dude, I'm so fresh into this industry. I don't really, like, yeah, I'm but just, it's great. I'm, I'm just coming into it and I, know, I love it because I'm like, there's so many people to like kind of pick their brains on. And I love the way social media is evolving. I feel like a lot of my like explorer page now is a lot of like drywallers, yeah. flippers, you know, things like that. So, yeah. Um, shout outs. No, I'm, I guess I can plug my own Instagram page. So absolutely. That, absolutely. Uh, Alenia painters. Uh, and that's on Instagram. I don't have a Facebook page just yet, but I think my stories are linked through there. So yeah, you can find me on, um, on Instagram there. If you're looking for me on TikTok, it's Josh Wamaga. So my last name, mm -hmm. -E M E G A H. You looking for me on there as well, too. There's more content to come. I'm probably going to put some, a lot of my firefighting stuff on there now too. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. So, I'm so, so, so pumped for it. I think that's like, just like the new chapter of my life now. It's just like, I did, I'm excited for you on that one. It's great money. Um, yeah, you know you're you're going to be paid to train quite a bit, right? You'll get you'll get in fantastic shape, and then you'll have a lot of time for yourself. Uh, you know, if you if you jump head first into the company thing, that's great. And if not, you know, you'll you'll have a ton of time for yourself too. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So that that's great, man. I I like hearing that. Um, we'll have to have you on again once you're a firefighter. Oh yeah, for sure. Hundred percent. We'll, we'll see how fun that was. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay, man. Well, that's fantastic. Um, if anybody can't find you or any of that stuff, just uh, message me and, and I'll, I'll send you through to them. Okay. All, All right. right. Be Thank humble, you. treat everyone the same and do your fucking job. Yes, sir.